What is going on, New York Giant fans? Welcome back to another video. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Comment and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when the live stream pops or a video drops. Appreciate all coming back. Share this out. Do all the good stuff. Check out our live stream with John Schmelk a couple of days ago. It was a fun interview talking about the NFL draft and uh, the Giants draft class most notably. So, we're going to talk about a little bit of an outcome of that draft which was the new york giants sticking with daniel jones not opting for any replacements in the draft and sticking with him and drew lock on the roster and really talking about is this daniel jones's last chance now obviously to many the answer will seem pretty much out there but to others they may stick with him a little bit longer but again think how you will we're going to go through everything so i'm going to go with the background of daniel jones not too much to talk about then we'll go to what he has going for him and what has been working against him or what he has going up against him. And then if it is his last stand, even for a starting job. And also what he needs to do. So, Daniel Jones, right? Drafted by the New York Giants in 2019. First round pick. Solid rookie season. Coaches are fired. The next two years are utter hell and production-wise to where they had him scared throwing the ball. Limited route tree from the wide receivers offense sucked um and a lot of giant fans were done with daniel jones after 21 because they felt it had been three years and they opted to sign tyrod taylor as a backup but keep daniel jones and it seemed very much like brian dable wanted a little bit more to do with daniel jones than joe shane did because he listed all these different guys that they wanted to keep the core players in this one preseason game in the interview he was doing and he wasn't really talking about daniel jones but 2022 he does better right i'm not gonna say he balls out because that's kind of uh you know that's that's not really the term when you throw 15 touchdowns but to many they think okay it was like his second best season which it was other than his rookie season production wise the turnovers were down which to be honest with you i wasn't really concerned about the turnovers um i was more concerned about you know the production overall and he also had seven rushing touchdowns so they brought that back out in him so he had 22 total touchdowns, 708 yards on the ground, and passing-wise, he had over 3,000, specifically 3,205. So the Giants go to the playoffs. They win a game against the Vikings. They get blown out by the Eagles. And as far as Daniel Jones goes, he is signed to a extension four years, $160 million a year. And as far as that goes, about $40 million annually, but the cap numbers are thrown around. Year 2 is basically the final year, and then the out is before year 3, which you could do, but the Giants may or may not opt to do that. We'll see. Again, but 2023, everything that could go wrong went wrong for the New York Giants. The offensive line was bad. The defense was eh. Uh, Daniel Jones was pretty much not himself under the circumstances, and even with that, I think he only had really one good game. The first game against Dallas, you know, the offensive line was utter garbage. The second game, he only had one good half. The third game against San Francisco wasn't great. He missed a couple of open receivers. Kind of the same thing the following week, and then he gets injured against the uh, against the Miami Dolphins, comes back against the Raiders. Very much so that it was uh, bad injury management by the Giants. Tears his ACL. And now we're on a long rehab process back at the New York Giants have not elected for a replacement. And it is what it is at this moment. It is DeVito. It is Drew Locke. It is Daniel Jones. So what does Daniel Jones have going for him this year? Well, I believe this is the best supporting cast he's ever had. Whether you're a Daniel Jones guy, you don't like Daniel Jones, this, that, and the third. Uh, this is the best supporting cast that he's probably ever seen. The offensive line, they added Jermaine Illuminor. And these are not top A B, C, well, I mean, I, I should say they're not like all star, you know, reinforcements. Jermaine Lomonor is not a pro bowler, but he's a very solid right tackle, right guard, can play in a couple of different spots. Uh, Carmine Brasillo, just getting a new old line coach in that understands the strengths and the weaknesses of the players in a better blocking scheme. Theo Johnson, who they drafted in the fourth round out of Penn State, he's got a huge catch radius, will help Daniel Ballinger a little bit too. Uh, John Runyon, solid pass protector from Green Bay. 
and most notably Malik Neighbors, who they drafted in the first round to help him out. And, you know, people are saying, well, this is not for Daniel Jones, it's for the Giants offense. Well, right now, Daniel Jones is the quarterback for the New York Giants. So, yeah, they are drafting him for Daniel Jones. And we'll see what happens after 2024, maybe even midway, if they opt to go with Drew Locke or something along those lines. Now, what works against him in this scenario? The injury history is a big one. Every single year he's been injured, but did not miss a game in 2022. 2019, I believe it was the ankle. Uh, 2020, I believe it was something similar. If it wasn't that, it was the hamstring. I remember that you know he was throwing passes weird against Cincinnati, and then they rushed him back and all these other different things. 2021, it was the neck injury. 2022, I forget what injury he had, but nearly didn't play against the Packers. But he shrugged it out and, you know, credit to him. The Giants won that game in a few more games that season. And 2023, neck injury and also uh, as far as that goes, a torn ACL. So that is as far as that goes, the injury history. It's pretty long. It's pretty rampant for a quarterback that's getting paid a $40 million per year. Lack of production. Now, sometimes you could flip the coin heads, tails, whatever. The first part of his career turnovers were the main issue my issue now is the lack of production right you want to talk about the turnovers you can I think a lot of his interceptions last year were blown up because they were a lot of tipped passes the lack of production I'm talking about in terms of the touchdown stats I'm also talking about the stuff he leaves on the field a lot of plays were left on the field last season to where he had guys running open Jalen Hyatt uh, Darius Slayton Wondell Robinson against the Seahawks. Wondell Robinson, he had him in the flat wide open against the Dolphins and blatantly missed him. Darren Waller, too. So there's just multiple plays you saw on film last year. And yes, the situation was very bad behind that old line. But the wide receiver core was not like 32nd in the league. It wasn't a great wide receiver core, but it was something you could work with. If you're getting paid $40 million per year, that's just my honest opinion. But the lack of production is something that really sticks out to me is, you know, I could take turnovers if you're taking risks and you're throwing the ball really well. But Daniel Jones hasn't really done that over the course of his career, speaking objective, objectively. Uh, contract out next season. Talked about it earlier, right? Got two years and then the out in the third year of the contract. And then, you know, obviously the fourth year, you know, I don't think they'll keep until the fourth year, but just talking about the scenario. Joe Shane and Brian Dable's jobs. If... Daniel Jones does not ball out this year. There are two things that could happen. The Giants could go into 2025 and select a quarterback, or they could go out there and uh, sign a quarterback in free agency. Or Joe Shane and Brian Dable, I don't think it'll happen, but there's a possibility that both of them don't have a job because they decided to stick with Daniel Jones and the Giants might have a little bit of a downfall from there. Now, personally, me, again, if you were to ask me, do you think these guys' jobs are safe? I do, because let's face it, John Mara is sentimental towards Daniel Jones, however you feel about it. He brought the team's first playoff win in a few years, and also, as a matter of fact, he really hasn't been surrounded with talent. That's why John Mara is sticking to Daniel Jones, right? That's why he's also giving these guys another chance. And because John Mayer is not going to say, oh, well, I love Daniel Jones, but you guys got it wrong, so you guys are fired. Like, he's not going to be a hypocrite in himself. He's going to let these guys get another quarterback if Daniel Jones does fail. And he doesn't want to keep making these changes all sorts of, you know, after three years, after two years, after a year and a half. He doesn't want to make those changes every single regime, basically. And I'll say this, right, before we go to is it his last stand, even for a starting job, you don't have to play like Patrick Mahomes. You don't have to play like a superstar. But what I'm asking of Daniel Jones and what many Giant fans have been asking of Daniel Jones is play like Dak. Now, that's not the greatest example in the world, but Dak currently $40 million. Derek Carr, $37 million. Geno Smith, I think like $35 million. Baker Mayfield somewhere in that range. I think maybe same as Daniel Jones, or maybe a little bit more than Daniel Jones because of the way he paraded himself in Tampa and they got to the playoffs and did some things. So 
as far as that goes, we're not asking him to play like Josh Allen. We're not asking him to play like Patrick Mahomes. We're asking him to go out there, this is the best situation, go through any adversity that you face, and put up numbers. Stop leaving plays on the field when you have receivers open. That's what I'm saying. And verdict, is it his last stand even for a starting job? I think it is his last stand as a Giants quarterback, and if he is that bad, they would probably throw in Drew Locke. I think also something that works against him is the first few weeks of the season, he has an injury designation. So if he gets injured, the Giants are charged $25 million, and I think the contract rolls over to the next year. So the Giants may not want to really deal with that, and you know I don't blame them. But I think if he does okay, mediocre, like 15 touchdowns, I think he could get another starting job in the NFL, but if he just blatantly sucks to where he's not getting the production that the Giants want and he's leaving plays on the field and he's committing turnovers and all these other different things, then I think he may not get a starting job ever again. And, you know, that's very interesting to say because there's still some quarterback needy teams out there that would take a Daniel Jones. But, you know, I just don't see... I think there's going to be teams more that reach in the draft next year for quarterbacks because there's a quantity more than a quality. But again, I think either way, it's his last stand as New York Giants quarterback for the starting job. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff, turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Share this out. Let's try to get to 2,000 as fast as possible. Appreciate you guys. See you later.